today we're going to learn the right hand rule thing. Is it going? Yes, it's going. Oh my goodness! Okay, to write an equation of a plane, you need two things. You need a point and a perpendicular vector. The key to working with planes is to work with the perpendicular vector. That's the key. And then today is the last lecture of the hour. And no homework tomorrow. Tuesday night's homework, <coughs> discuss it Wednesday, I guess the test is Thursday. Yeah. Okay, and number, you thank you for putting it in order. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Do you notice that number three and four are the same problem? Okay, this is the perpendicular vector, so the equation is 0x plus 0y plus 1z plus d equals 0. That's the equation. And then it passes through the point 1, 4, 5. So if I plug in 5 for z, d is negative 5. So z minus 5 equals 0. That's the equation of the plane. That was very bizarre, people. If you give it a perpendicular vector, these numbers are the same as the coefficients of x, y, and z. How come you could do three? Three was harder. It didn't have zeros. Okay, next. Five. Okay, if you guys need to draw, I wouldn't be surprised if this is on tomorrow's quiz too. Given the points A, two, 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 and B, four, six, eight. Write the equation of the plane that is perpendicular to the segment at its midpoint. Okay, let's call it M for midpoint. So here's the plane. It's like this. Like this. It's dimensional. Write the equation of this plane. First, we need a perpendicular vector. Do you see a vector perpendicular to this plane? Yeah, I see six vectors perpendicular to this plane. One, two, three, four, five, six. Any one of those vectors is perpendicular to the plane, right? So use any one. It doesn't matter which one you use. Which one you want to use? AM. OK, we've got to compute M. M is the midpoint, so what is that? 3, 4, 5. OK, so you guys want to use vector AM. What is vector AM in component form? Head minus tail. 1, 2, 3. So this vector is perpendicular to the plane, therefore the equation is 1x plus 2y plus 3z plus d equals 0, right? And what point is on the plane? Huh? Only one of these is m. Zero. There's no zero here. M. That, look, this is the plane right here. Which of these three points lies on the plane? M. So take this point, plug it in for x, y, and z, and that's how you figure out d. You guys can do that, right? Do you guys understand you need that the perpendicular vector is everything? That tells you the equation of the plane. Hey, you guys, even if you don't even do your homework, even if you just listen and sit there like a lump on a log, you can get it. Okay, next. Six. Write the equation. Okay, here's a sphere. Tangent. Okay, here's the plane. I'm not going to draw it three-dimensionally, but the plane is like this. Tangent to the sphere at the point 2, 1, 2. What is the center of this sphere? 0, 0, 0, Oregon. Okay, now look at this picture. Do you see a vector perpendicular to the plane? Yes, I see two. This one or this one, right? It's perpendicular to When you draw the radius to the point of tangency, it makes a right angle. So what, what, which one you want to do? Which way you want to make it point? Towards the plane or away from the plane? It doesn't matter, that's why. As long as it's perpendicular. Toward the plane, why? 
Because when you go head minus tail, you don't have to deal with negative numbers. But it doesn't matter. Some of you, negative numbers are your friends. Some of you, I don't know. So head minus tail, go. So this vector is perpendicular to the plane. Therefore, the equation of the plane is 2x plus 1y plus 2z plus d equals 0. And what point do I plug in to figure out d? Yeah, this one, because this is the point that lies on the plane. Isn't this easy? It is. But wait till you get the application problems later. Woo! Then your head's going to explode. Uh huh. Okay, if you plug in 2, 1, 2, that comes out to 9, right? So then isn't D negative 9? Because 9 minus 9 is 0, right? But if I move this number on this side, it becomes positive 9, right? I, it doesn't matter which, which side you have to cross it on. I, since it's positive, I put it on that side because it looks pretty. You know what I mean? Because see, if you, if you did this plus this plus this equal negative 7, that's so gauche. I mean, I just make it look pretty. I'm just gussing it up for you. Seven. Thank you, Mr. Park. Didn't we do this problem yesterday? Oh, I guess you guys are getting more and more like period three. Just sit there, stare. Okay, where does this plane intersect the circle? I mean, sphere. What did we do yesterday? Remember how goes home? Remember the xy plane was z equals 0? Then didn't we plug in 0 for z? But this is the plane z equals 3 now. So how do I find where it intersects the sphere? Plug in 3 for z. It's just, just, like, just like you work with regular things. So you get x squared plus y squared equals, what's 16? What's the radius of the, this is a circle, yeah? Yeah, the radius is 4. Therefore, the area is pi r squared. So what is that, 16 pi? Because look, you have a sphere. If you intersect it with a plane, the intersection is a circle. That's the equation of that circle right there. The radius is 4. So therefore, the area is pi r squared. People, if you want to find where two graphs intersect, it's just subst it's called substitution. Just substitute it in. This is not anything exotic. Number 10. Number Eight. Oh. Okay. If you okay here, you have two planes intersecting. If you want to find the angle at which they intersect, you look at their perpendicular vectors. So look, this one has a perpendicular vector, right? This one has a perpendicular vector. The angle between the two these two vectors is the angle between the two planes. Do you guys see why? If I take this, okay, move it over here, okay, so that you're testing. See how the angle, why is this angle equal to that angle there? How many degrees are there in a quadrilateral? 360, but if this is 90 and this is 90, that means these two angles got to add up to 180. So why is this angle and that angle the same. Can we just stare at it some more? <laughs> Why is this angle here and this angle there the same? Yeah, I know they're supplementary because they add up to one angle. Why? <laughs> Because look, this one plus this one add up to 180, but this one plus this one add up to 180, so therefore that one's going to be equal. Anyway, look, the key to working with planes is you work with the perpendicular vectors. Okay? So look at the two planes given. This is, what number are we doing? Eight. What's the, what vector is perpendicular to that first plane? Oh, boy. Two, two, negative one. You just look at the coefficients. The coefficients of x, y, and z, that tells you the components of the perpendicular vector. Okay? 
And then, what about the second one? The second plane, what's the perpendicular vector? One, two, one. If you find the angle between these two vectors, that's gonna be the angle between the two planes. Yeah, so what do you do when you see angle? Dot product, even though some of you didn't even do dot product yesterday. So the cosine of the angle is equal to the dot product of the two vectors. How do you find the dot product of two three-dimensional vectors? You multiply the x component, you multiply the y component, you multiply the z components, and you add them up. Then you divide that by the length of the first vector, which is the square root of that squared plus that squared plus that squared. Ooh, but that comes out three. Three. And then the length of this vector is the square root of that squared plus that squared plus that squared. Six. So that comes out to six, five over three root six. So therefore, the angle is cosine inverse five over three root six. Is that a number we know for cosine? No, no so then just leave it. So you can probably bet tomorrow it'll come out to like, what did it come out yesterday? One root six. Yeah, whatever. Tomorrow it might come out to like root three or You gotta simplify it. You guys understand that? The key to working with planes is to work with the perpendicular vector. And so the same thing with number 10. Number 10, here we have a plane. Write an equation of a plane that's parallel to this. Now this, there's an infinite number of answers. As long as you give me one, you're gonna get full credit. Here look, you have two planes that are parallel. Here's a perpendicular vector. What is the perpendicular vector to this plane? 4, 1, negative 3. You just look at the x, y, and z coefficients. So if this plane is going to be parallel to this one, doesn't, doesn't this perpendicular vector have to be perpendicular to this one as well? So therefore, the equation of this plane is going to be 4x plus 1y minus 3z equal any number here except 10. How come we can't use 10? Because then it would be the same plane. So any number you want. You can pick it, let's be exotic here. The cube root of pi squared. Yeah, that's good. Whatever number you want, as long as it's not 10. And can you see why? Look at two, okay, two dimensions. 2x plus 3y equal 4. 2x plus 3y equal 5. Okay, how come these are parallel, these lines? Yeah, so it's kind of the same thing, right? Doesn't it make sense? Okay, B. Uh, perpendicular. Okay, here. Here are two perpendicular. These are planes now, yeah? What's the perpendicular vector for this one? 4, 1, negative 3. So if I want to write an equation of a plane that's perpendicular to that, then its perpendicular vector has to be perpendicular to this one, right? And how do you tell when two vectors are perpendicular? The dot product is 0. So all you have to do is come up with a vector so that when you dot it with this one, you get zero. And do not be like last year, because somebody said, oh, it's zero, zero, zero there. But then that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so can you see there's an infinite number of answers? Just give one. How about two, one, three? Because look, you do the dot product. What is four times two? Eight. Eight. One times one is one. And then negative three times three is negative nine. See, dot product is zero. So you know they're perpendicular. Yeah? Why did this right here Because that, that it does, that's nothing. OK, so then what's the answer then? You can't use zero. It's a, it's a vector that has no length. Pointing nowhere, how is that going to help you? <laughs> anyway, if I put this on the test, it's going to say non zero components because I don't want you to use zero because it's too easy. You know what I'm talking about? So, okay, infinite number of answers. So, as long as your dot product comes out this, oh, so let's write the answer. So, 2x plus 1y plus 3z equals any number your heart desires. Oh, real number, by the way. Don't put imaginary stuff there. You can't think just one then. Be mundane. 
And then number 11, that formula, distance between a point and a plane, hmm, I think we might use that tomorrow. Come on, if we don't have that memorized right now, something wrong. Right? Okay, so tomorrow's quiz, all three dimensional stuff. Okay, today we're going to learn the right hand roll, a cross product. Okay, how much time do we have? Plus, we got to, oh, uh, well, if we run out of time, we can always do that tomorrow. Okay, now, remember I told you there's two kinds of vector multiplication? What is this one called? The dot product. We already learned about that. Okay, today we're going to learn about this one. See how clever they are? There's two symbols for multiplication. So this one's called the dot product. This one is called the cross product. See, but the difference between the two is this. What is the result of the dot product? You get a number. scalar, a number, right? That's work, okay, in physics. Okay, but when you multiply two vectors using the cross product, it's going to be another vector, which means it has magnitude and direction. You guys in physics know what this is, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so here's the definition of the cross product. Now remember, when you multiply two vectors using this, you get another vector. So you have magnitude and direction. Let's talk about the magnitude first. The magnitude of the cross product, see how I put the bars around it beneath magnitude, is equal to the length of the first vector times the length of the second vector times the sine of the angle formed by the two vectors when you put them tail to tail. And you guys in physics are going, hey, that's a... Uh, torque! Oh. RF <laughs> sine theta. Or aren't you guys learning, what is that QVB sine theta thing? Yeah, what is that? That's the magnetic force? I don't know, what is it? Magnetic force? Hey, whatever. Okay, so this will just give you the length of the cross product. Now remember, it's a vector. Okay, so here, example. What if vector A looks like this, and the length of it is, give me a number, four. Here's vector B, and let's say the length of it is three, and this angle is 30 degrees. What would be the magnitude of the cross product? The length of the cross product. It would be the length of the first vector times the length of the second vector times the sine of this angle, which is a half. So you get six. So we know it's a vector, and the length of it is six. But which way does it point? Well, if you read the notes, what does it say? The direction. Okay, so this is the magnitude of it. Now we've got to talk about the direction. The direction of the cross product is perpendicular to the plane containing the two vectors. So when you have any two vectors, it doesn't matter where they are in space. If you put them tail to tail, don't they lie in a plane? Yeah. So the cross product is going to be perpendicular to this plane. Perpendicular according to the right hand rule. Okay, now. So, here is the plane of the chalk form. Perpendicular to that, either it's going to point to diamond head or it's going to point to alpha. How do you know which one it is? You use the right hand rule. So what you do is you take out your right hand. Okay. Now notice we're doing A cross B. So you have, it's, it, it, this is like matrices now. So A cross B is not the same thing as B cross A. Commutative property doesn't work. So A comes first. So here's A, here's B. You curl your fingers from the first vector to the second vector, like this, see, from A to B. Curl your fingers that way. The direction at which your thumb is pointing is the direction of the cross product. That means it's pointing to diamond head. See? From A to B. See, you can't do this. How can you curl your, your fingers from A to B? Ow! From A to B, you can't. You have to put your head this way, right, to curl your fingers. So the vector points that way. And you guys in physics, how do you draw a vector that points that way, coming out of the page? Dot. Dot. Yeah, it's a dot like that. It's kind of like you're looking at an arrowhead and it's coming straight at your eye. Uh, see, see the tip of the arrow? 
But what if the vectors were this way? What if this was vector B and this was vector A? Then to go from A to C, you cannot curl your fingers from A to L that way. You gotta turn your hand this way to curl your fingers from A to B. Which way is your thumb pointing now? Towards it's pointing above. And of course, how do you draw a vector pointing that way? Like that. <laughs> no, it's like you, if you shoot an arrow, <laughs> then you see the feathers of the arrow going away from you, right? If the arrow's coming toward you, you see the tip of the arrow. Come on, you guys in physics, this is like, you do this every day, right? screwdriver then. Look, to go from A to B, the closest way is to go counterclockwise, right? If you were to take a screwdriver and turn it counterclockwise like this, which way does the screw come out? I just told you which way. It comes out. It goes that way. Whereas this one, the closest way to go from A to B is this way, right? Which is clockwise. So if you had a screwdriver and you turn it clockwise, which way does the screw go? It goes in. Counterclockwise come out, clockwise go in. Whatever, right hand, screwdriver, whatever. You, you just got to know the direction. So, does everybody understand the cross product is a vector? So you not only have to give magnitude, but you have to give direction. So if you only tell me six, that's half credit. What direction does it go? Just like torque, when you do torque, don't you have to know per perpendicular to the plane, right hand rule? Whatever. Okay, now, the problem with drawing pictures is that, again, it's kind of humbug, right? So that's why if the vectors are in component form, then we have theorems that can help us. So here we go. Let me state a theorem for you. If vector A is in component form, and this, this is three dimensions now, A comma B comma C. But if it is two-dimensional, you can, you can just make the Z component zero, right? That's the kind of tricks you guys do in physics, right? No, we just memorize formulas. That's why we have our time. And let's say the components of vector V are D, E, and F. Then, to compute the cross product, instead of drawing these pictures and doing the right hand rule and measuring the angle, all we have to do is evaluate a three by three determinant. I, J, K goes across the first row, A, B, C, and then D, E, F. There you go. This is a really good theorem. If you study engineering and physics in college, this is going to save you. Right there. Now it's important to make sure the first vector you put the components here and the second vector you put the components there. You cannot mix them up. Can you see why now? What would happen if you mix, what if you switch these two rows? What did we learn when we studied matrices? What happens when you switch two rows in a, matrix, in a determinant? It negates the value. So your vector is pointing the wrong di direction and you're fired from your job. Right? So A cross B is not the same thing as B cross A. If you make that mistake on the test, that's a lot of points coming off. Okay, so let's let's look at an example. Okay, how, let me just do one example to encompass all of this. Okay, this problem is gonna, probably going to be on the test. Here is a triangle in space now. This is in three dimensions. Okay, make up some numbers. Five. Five, two, three. Okay. B is six, six, six. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then C. One, two, one, two, three. How creative. No, let's not use three. That look, this could be the same as over here. How one, three, two then? Let's be a little creative. Okay. Would you agree that this triangle lies on a plane? Okay, write the equation of this plane. In fact, you got two of two nights homework, that, that's the problem. I give you a triangle. Okay, what did we learn from last night's homework? What do you need to write an equation of a plane? A point. Well, I got three points. 
and a perpendicular vector. I have to somehow find a vector that's perpendicular to this plane. But what did we just learn? The cross product is a vector that's perpendicular to the plane. So what you do is you form any two vectors here, any, any two, it doesn't matter. Shall we just go with AB and AC? Okay. Componentize each one. AB is head minus tail, so 1, 4, 3, am I doing this correctly? Vector AC is negative 4, 1, negative 1, correct? These two vectors lie in the plane, right? So if you compute the cross product, you're going to get a vector perpendicular to the plane, according to the right-hand rule, because that's what the cross product is. So all you have to do is compute a 3 by 3 determinant, i, j, k across the top. Does it matter which one I put in first? Yeah, yeah. No. Well, in this problem, no, because I don't care whether the vector points that way or that way. I just need it to be perpendicular. So it doesn't matter in this problem. I just need a perpendicular vector. I don't care how long or which direction, perpendicular. Compute this. Do we know how to compute 3 by 3 determinants? Yeah. You bet your bit be like we do. So go across the first row. Don't forget the minus now. This minus is going to cost a lot of you a lot of points right there. I know already. Remember how, what? You remember why it's plus minus plus? So put plus minus plus positions. Okay, so this one. Cross out the row and column. You get negative 4 minus 3. Okay, this one, you cross out the row and column, so you get negative 1 plus 12. Okay. 11. And then you cross out the row and column here, and then you get 1 plus 16. 17. 17. Now, do you, do you guys even remember what i, j, k are? Okay. Let's go back a couple of days. What's the difference between 2, 3, 5 and 2i plus 3j plus 5k. What's the difference between these two? <laughs> Nothing. They mean the same thing. It means the x component is 2, the y component is 3, the, the z component is 5. These are just different ways of writing it. OK? So if you don't like i, j, k, because some of you don't, yeah, just, just do this. Then. So they mean exactly the same thing. This vector is perpendicular to the plane containing the triangle. Therefore, what's the equation of this plane? Uh, you get 7x plus 11y minus 17z plus d equals 0. I just multiplied by negative 1 because I don't like my first term being negative. That's, that's gauche. Look, if this vector is perpendicular to the plane, if I multiply it by negative 1, isn't it still perpendicular to the plane except just pointing the opposite way, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? Multiply by negative 1. Wait, let me know. Yeah. No, that D is just a number. Wow. Okay. Okay, don't get confused with that. Okay, you know what? This is period 6, I forgot. Negative 7x <laughs> minus 11y. No, we're going to be gold. 17z. No. But too late. I changed it already. You guys want the first term negative? Go. Okay, now, how do I figure out what D is? You plug in any one of these three points, and I love 1666. Yeah. You like 666? Okay. Then you better be able to multiply 17 times 6. Then. Maybe we better go to 132 then. It doesn't matter, anyone. Okay, let's plug in 1, 3, 2. Go. Negative 7 minus 33 plus 34 plus D equals 0. Therefore, D is? Are you sure? Oh, you should have plugged in 666. Bonus 6 there. So the equation of this plane okay, is negative 7x minus 11y plus 17z plus 6 equals 0. But you look. When you, okay, you do the problem, then you look on the bottom for the answer. This is what you're going to see. 7x plus 11y plus, uh, minus 17z is equal to 6. Is that going to throw you off? That's the same thing. Yeah. 
Okay, so everybody got that? You need a perpendicular vector at a point. Every time you write an equation of a plane, that's what you need. Okay, part two. Find the area of this triangle. Okay, we're running out of time. I'm just going to tell you. Okay? Okay, where's, where's my cross product? Here is the cross product right here. Everybody agree? Yeah, I'm going to find the length of it. What, how do I find the length of a three-dimensional vector? The square root of the first component squared plus the second component squared plus the third component squared, correct? Some of you don't know 17 squared is 289 of it. Too bad, I'm putting it down. Everybody agree? Okay, therefore the area of the triangle is divided by 2. <laughs> Why? Why is that? Why? Why is half the length of the cross product the area of this triangle? Stock just went up. Very good, Morris. So time, Morris. Okay, so throughout the whole year, stock just went up. Now it just went up. <laughs> At least it didn't keep continuing going to go down. Exactly. Do you understand what he just said? No. What? Okay, we found the cross product of these two vectors, right? A cross B. What did we just learn? What's the definition of the cross product? The length of the first times the length of the second times the sine of the angle. Doesn't this remind you of one half AB sine C? Yeah. Isn't that the area of a triangle? One half AB sine C? But then no more than half. So just multiply both sides by half. There you go. Oh. One half AB sine C is the area of the triangle. This is the length of the cross product. So if I just take the length of it, divide by two, that's the area of the triangle. Which, of course, means then the length of the cross product is simply the area of the parallelogram formed by the two vectors. Because the triangle is half a parallelogram. Oh, boy. There you go. Okay, we're running out of time already. So there is one last thing we've got to learn is, are there other coordinate systems in three dimensions? Is this rectangular the only one? No. No, just like in, in two dimensions, we've got rectangular and polar. Believe me, you gotta know polar is still here. Yeah? Now in three dimensions, are there others? Yes, they're cylindrical and spherical. I believe that's part of tonight's homework, but if you want to wait on that, or you can read the notes, it'll tell you exactly what each one is. Okay, the bell's gonna ring in two minutes, so. So tomorrow, since there's not gonna be any homework, we're just gonna take the quiz, go over homework problems, and we're done. Yep. Okay. We're done.